A lot of you are probably familiar with this depiction of the unit circle. You have a circle with radius 1, positioned at the origin, with some special values for the coordinates of the circle provided around the outside, for cardinal directions, as well as 30, 45, and 60 degrees past each. But the larger idea is that each point on the circle has coordinates cosine theta, comma sine theta, where theta is the angle that each point makes with the center of the circle, the origin. More specifically, the angle formed between the radius, drawn from the point on the circle to the origin, and the x-axis. But sine and cosine are trigonometric functions, trig as in triangle. What are they doing in a shape with a distinct lack of three sides and three angles? Here, I'd like to explore where the connection lies between triangles and unit circles, and how you might have been able to discover it for yourself. Students in America typically learn trigonometric functions first as the ratios of two sides on a right triangle. If theta is one of the acute angles, sine of theta is the ratio between the side opposite theta and the hypotenuse, and cosine is the ratio between the adjacent side and hypotenuse. Importantly, these ratios connect theta to the sides of the triangle, and vice versa. So if you know that the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 3, and its angle theta is 60 degrees, then you can find the lengths of both of its remaining sides. Let's call the base B and the height H. Sine of theta concerns H, so you might write out sine of 60 degrees equals H over 3. And solving for H, h equals 3 sine 60 degrees. You can do the same thing for b, writing cosine of 60 degrees equals b over 3. In solving for b, b equals 3 cosine of 60 degrees. More generally, you might look for what these side lengths amount to for any given theta value. And naturally, we find that b equals 3 cosine theta and h equals 3 sine theta. These answers are just our radius 3 times our trig functions of theta, and in fact if you scale the hypotenuse down to 1, scaling the rest of the triangle with it, you'll find that these side lengths just become cosine theta and sine theta. This result is particularly intriguing because we have just taken what are generally thought of as ratios between two physical quantities, and found them to be physical quantities themselves. And these expressions apply to any triangle with radius 1, across any theta value that we may supply. Now, if you are playing around with these triangles in your mind or on some paper, maybe you think to place them on a coordinate plane, so that you can better understand how they compare to each other. And this step is clearer if you're looking for a connection between these triangles and the coordinates of a unit circle. Since this bottom left corner is the one which the angle theta radiates from, we might put it the origin, so that our hypotenuse can spin around the origin. So on the coordinate plane, what are the coordinates of the points of our triangles? Well, this point in the bottom right has no height and has traveled the base of the triangle rightward, so its coordinates are b0. This point in the top right is directly above it, so it also has an x-coordinate of b. But it has also risen the height h of the triangle, so its coordinates would be bh. Earlier we defined both of these quantities in terms of theta, so its coordinates can also be written cosine theta sine theta. And again, the interesting thing here is that we haven't just solved for one coordinate pair, we've solved for all of them. If we want to consider every possible coordinate pair that shares this property, what that looks like is varying theta, keeping the hypotenuse at a length of 1, and letting this point trace its path. And we get the unit circle. For each point on this circle, there is a corresponding right triangle whose angle theta at the center of the circle provides the values for the point's coordinates. For those values most often shown on the unit circle, these are the points whose coordinates come from a special right triangle, so its sides, and in turn the coordinates of the point, can be found precisely. However, I have made a bit of a leap in logic for the sake of visual clarity. So far, we have considered triangles with angles 0 to 90 degrees. What does it even mean for theta to have a value outside of this range? Well, in this case, the traditional view of sine and cosine as ratios of sides of a right triangle breaks down, and we get to create our own definition of them. The definition that is the most useful to many other forms of math, including polar coordinates, is to flip the relationship and define sine and cosine by the coordinates of the point on the circle defined by theta. 
This is often interpreted visually as drawing another right triangle under a point on these regions, and providing a negative sign to one or both lengths, if it is the base left of the y-axis or the height below the x-axis. Now our circle is complete, and each possible triangle generates a point on the circle whose coordinates are provided by that triangle's cosine and sine values of theta. And that is why every point on the union circle has coordinates of the form cosine theta, sine theta.